Hey guys, today I'm going to look at seven different ways you can reduce your taxes legally. Keyword, legally. I'm making this video at a time when we recently had the autumn statement, effectively a budget here in the UK. And if you missed it, here's a summary. We're all paying more taxes. Not only today, not tomorrow, but as far as six years into the future, potentially, in some cases. So today I want to look at different ways we can look at reducing our taxes. Now, I want to be very clear. This video is not there to encourage you to evade taxes. That's that's completely illegal and you should not be doing that. What I would share today are things that exist today that anyone can actually explore that are completely legal. You can even find them on the, on the government's website. But there are things that people don't explore or even take advantage of today. So with more taxes coming our way, with more of your own money, disappear into taxes, uh, given the rule changes, given the, uh, the recent change, changes in the in the budget, what you really want to be doing is paying close attention to trying to retain more of your own money and build more of your, of your own wealth into the future. Okay, for those who are new to our channel, my name is Ken of the Humble Penny and Financial Joy Academy. What we do on this channel is to give you the tips, the insights, the practical hacks to help you take control of your finances, grow your money, and ultimately work towards creating for yourself a dream life of financial independence and money joy. Now, before diving into the seven things I'm gonna to share today, I wanted to just highlight some important mindsets that we need to be bearing as we go through this particular season. Okay, so one thing that's very clear with the changes is that every single thing, everyone's really trying to you know, whether it's from taxes, whether it's from inflation, from all angles, money is disappearing from our pocket. So one big mindset shift that we should have right now is that there will be a shift in behavior for almost all of us. By that, I mean, uh, a lot of us, we pay much closer attention to our spending and be looking at spending more intentionally, essentially putting money into anything that means that we will be better off in the future rather than just fighting to survive necessary. That's the first thing. The second thing is that there'll be a need for us to work smarter, not harder. You must have heard this. It might sound like a buzz phrase and what have you, but there's this is even more important now, the need for us to work smarter, not harder. By that, by that I'm saying, what I'm really saying here is, is you need to focus on ROI activities, so things that give you a return on investment, things that will actually help you uh, get the biggest bang for your buck or the biggest bang for your time, activities that essentially create more value in your life and from a business perspective might increase your bottom line or from a personal wealth perspective might keep more of your savings in your in your bank account and grow more of your investments second thing and the third thing by the way if you want to skip this segment of the mindset i've time stamped this video so you can jump ahead and look at the seven points but these points are important before i actually start the third point is the need to switch to what i call your hunter instinct okay I was watching a documentary recently on uh, Disney Plus and uh, the documentary is called Limitless. If you can find it, you should try and watch it. Very interesting looking at you know, longevity and stuff like that. But there's a point that is related to money. They did this uh, uh, one episode where they went to Africa, to Tanzania specifically, uh, to look at hunters who don't usually eat for as you know for you know, maybe a day or two days or three days in many instincts. And those hunters, one thing that actually happens in, is that over time, um, I believe it's ketones that get released in their bodies. And over time, those hunters, essentially their senses get so fine-tuned that they, they dispel off any distractions in their lives and they focus solidly on trying to get that kill, trying to get that result, trying to get that uh, dinner they're going to have or that meal they're going to have with their families. Yeah. So their hunter instinct is switched on. The reason I'm bringing this up and it relates to money, you might be thinking, what's this got to do with our finances? It's got everything to do with it because right now I'm feeling like a lot of us, and you might be feeling this way, I'm feeling like we're all being hunted in different ways. So it's either you are switching on that hunter instinct or you're out there really, really doing your best to really stay ahead of the curve, to really, um, you know, find that bread, to find that food, to find that money, retain your wealth, or you effectively become the hunted, the hunted. And it sounds harsh, but that's the reality of life. So by watching this channel, by watching the videos we're putting out, I'm hoping you'd be in a former camp 
where you are actually, you've got that hunter instinct on and you're actually there making things happen rather than essentially letting things happen to, to you, okay? As we're seeing with taxes and so on, okay? With all that aside now, let's look at these seven ways that you can that can help you to reduce, reduce your tax legally. First, invest more in ISAs, okay? Now I know many people are struggling financially and you're probably going, I don't even have enough to pay my bills. I don't even have enough for anything, let alone investing in my ISAs, yeah? Because there are so many people watching this video um, and people have different scenarios, there will be people who can invest in, tax, in ISAs. And if you can, you know, you should prioritize your ISAs more than ever. Why? Because anything you invest into an ISA, your savings, your investments, are free from tax. They're free from any gains you generate are free from tax. And you remember from the autumn statement, which I'll link to below and above, if you've not seen it, go and watch it, uh, where I summarize what happened. Um, you know, investments outside of an ISA and outside of a pension, which I'll come to in a minute, are now um, being attacked effectively. You know, uh, capital gains tax is being reduced uh, significantly uh, starting um, in April next year. So to be, to be specific, uh, capital gains tax currently twelve thousand three hundred pounds per year uh, that you can you can have as a, an allowance is being cut to six thousand pounds in April twenty twenty three, being cut to three thousand pounds in April twenty twenty four, and you know essentially becomes a very small amount. So the ISA is a great place for you to invest your money. If you're looking to buy your property, if you're a first time buyer, then you need to be looking at uh, investing your money into a, a lifetime ISA, okay? Uh, this is great because not only um, is it does it give you tax-free growth, you also get 25% bonus contributions by putting money into a lifetime ISA. So it's a no-brainer to do that if you're a first time buyer trying to buy a property. But provided, of course, that you are aged between uh, 18 and 39 and you have at least a year until you're trying to buy that property. Okay, so that's the first way. Prioritize your uh, ISA investments. By the way, if you are uh, looking to learn about the pros and cons of lifetime ISAs, we've made a very super detailed video. I'll link to it below and above. Head over and check it out. Number two, contribute more into your pensions. Okay, very important. There are two ways you can either contribute to your pension as an employee or as someone who owns a business or a bit of both. Pensions naturally attract tax relief. So if you're a basic rate taxpayer, if you put uh, 80 pounds into a pension, you know, as an example, you get 40 pounds, uh, you get 20 pounds back, okay? If you're a higher rate taxpayer, you put 80 pounds, you get 40 pounds back, okay? And so on for the people who are uh, additional rate taxpayers. So you can see that the, it's definitely in your interest to put money into a pension. And with a pension, you usually get 25% of it tax-free, uh, lump sum tax-free in the future, and then the rest, gets taxed at your prevailing tax rate, okay? Now, the thing to know about pensions is that you can also contribute into a pension if, even if you're not working. So for anyone who has the means and who has a partner, you can actually put money into your partner's pension and they will get tax relief up to £3,600 per year. You would need to put £2,880 in and the government will top it up with £720, okay? Now, that's the employee segment. And by the way, we've made a super detailed video on a complete guide to pensions in the UK. If you're somebody who would love to know more about pensions, I'll link to that below and above. Feel free to go and binge on it, learn a bit more. Now, but on the subject of pensions, there's a lot more to this because if you run a business, let's say you're an employee, but you've got a side hustle that is making you some money or you're just a business owner purely, you can contribute up to 40,000 pounds from your business into your own pension. Um, and the business will be a tax deductible, deductible expense for your business, okay? And the fact that you're making an income from your salary does not actually count towards that because you can contribute that straight from your business. In addition to that, you can backdate your pension contributions provided it was a pension scheme in place. You can go as far back as uh, three years and get the 40,000 pounds per year. Again, I know I'm speaking to a very small group of people who have the means, but for the people who don't yet have the means, you can have the knowledge and work towards uh, that aspiration one day in the future, okay? That's number two, pensions. Number three is the marriage allowance. Here I'm speaking to people in, uh, in, a, in a marriage, obviously, or in a civil partnership, okay? So this allowance, and by the way, there are over two million people in the UK right now who qualify for this allowance, the marriage allowance, but who are currently not claiming it yet. 
So your chances are you might be one of those people if you are obviously in a marriage or in a civil partnership. But this uh, this allowance allows a spouse who is not using up all their personal allowances. So every year, as at now, we get £12,570 per year tax-free. And frustratingly, in the most recent autumn statement, that's been frozen for the next six years, which is just like, ah, just complete daylight, daylight rubbery. But anyway, that aside, somebody who's not using their, their personal allowances, yeah, can allocate 10% of it to their husband or wife. Yeah, 10%. Uh, this is only possible where your partner earns under £50,000, okay? So they're paying the basic rate of tax and stuff like that. So this allowance, by doing this, will allow you to save £252 a year, which, you know, let's not sniff at that, is good money. So it's £12,570 times 10% is 1257 yeah? And then, obviously, 20% of that will give you £251.40 uh, to be specific. So that's how you get... Uh, some tax savings when it comes to the marriage allowance. Number four is salary sacrifice. Yeah, so this is where the government will allow you to give up a portion of your salary, yeah, to be spent on things such as, you know, to put, put towards things such as your pension, uh, a bike to work scheme, you know, and things like that. Yeah, but uh, uh, the one that really stands out when it comes to that a lot of people use, obviously people use the back to work scheme and stuff like that, but pension is actually a pretty big one. There are some really big advantages when it comes to uh, using uh, salary sacrifice, which your employer has to offer, by the way, um, for your pension purposes. OK, so the first advantage is that you pay less national insurance. OK, and your employer also pays less uh, uh, employers national insurance. And I should say, by the way, uh, we've made a detailed video on how to invest more and pay less tax, where I share a lot more about salary sacrifice. If you're interested in learning about that, I'll link to it below and above. But for now, I'll share some more advantages. So the first is on the NI uh, point. Uh, but, um, but you pay less tax because you're being taxed on a lower taxable income. So effectively, what happens is, imagine you've got a gross income. When you give up some of it, some of it's giving up, giving up from your gross income straight into your pension. So the, the amount that's subject to tax is therefore a smaller uh, gross amount, yeah, that then goes through the process of national insurance and tax and so on, okay? But one of the most um, uh, standout reasons for doing uh, salary sacrifice are for those people who are earning in the middle income. So imagine you're someone who's maybe um, earning just over 50K, yeah? At that stage, when you start to earn uh, that sort of income, it starts to affect things like your child benefit, um, things that you can claim for your children, yeah? So by doing salary sacrifice, let's say you're earning, say, 55K, if you salary sacrifice, say, 5,000 pounds or a bit more into, say, your pension, it brings you down below that 50K mark such that you can then receive um, the full child benefit, for example, yeah? Which is then worth quite a lot for, for a lot of families. The other is for the people who are earning over 100K, for example. And as we know now, if you're earning around 125,000 pounds and above, you then become, uh, fall into the 45% tax rate. So by salary sacrificing some of your gross income for those people who are high earners, not only do you have more of that money going to your pensions and therefore being invested and growing and so on into the future, but you also bring yourself back into the 40% tax bracket from the 45% tax bracket if you are in that uh, position for when that kicks in it next year, yeah? For when the higher rate kicks in, uh, the additional rate kicks in for people at 125K and above, yeah? The other advantage tied to that also is for the people who, because over 100K you start to lose all your personal allowances. Um, you lose, um, I believe it's a pound for every two pounds above, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, so for anybody who hits around 120, 124,000, 125,000 thereabouts, they lose all their personal allowances. Yeah. So the more you salary sacrifice some of your gross salary into a pension, not only does it bring you lower in the tax band, as I mentioned earlier, but you also start to recover some of your personal allowances. Yeah. So 
This is huge if you think about it. Now, I know the big restriction is that you might have gotten yourself accustomed to a particular lifestyle. So readjusting your life such that you bring down your lifestyle a little bit and so on can be quite hard for some people because they are already maxing out on their lifestyle. So this is something you need to work out for yourself. But if you are able to do it, you might find that earning 99K for the people who obviously earn in that bracket might even be better for you compared to earning like 125K. Yeah, so the maths will work it out, but you know, if you work it out, particularly if your employer is also matching your contributions, this is where it gets even more powerful, then like you've got a huge incentive because not only is your tax bracket lower, but you get back your personal allowances and your employer matches your contributions as well. So it's just like it's like a triple win uh, for, for actually doing this, and obviously, it saves you tax and uh, and that sort of stuff. Yeah, um. Uh, number five is sharing assets. Yeah, uh, we've talked about this one before in a previous video, but it's actually worth bringing up. So you can take advantage of this spousal exemption. That means that assets that produce income, for example, can be shared between spouses without actually triggering uh, a tax bill. Yeah. So by doing this, you can max out on all your allowances. Yeah, so here I'm talking about your income tax allowances, capital gains tax allowances, dividends allowances, and savings allowances. Now, I know, obviously, in my previous video, I mentioned that there, there are huge changes coming with regards to uh, these various allowances, you know, income tax allowances being frozen, capital gains allowances being halved, dividend allowances essentially being, like, eradicated, you know, almost. They're just, there's a huge attack on these allowances. However, this is even more of a reason for you to explore, if, obviously, if you've got a partner and so on, to explore ways in which you can share your assets, can move your assets around such that you are maxing out on all your allowances. Okay. Um, number six, the sixth way in which you can reduce your tax bill is through gifting. And this speaks to inheritance tax specifically. Okay. Now, um, there's a seven year rule. Uh, when it comes to inheritance tax. So this is where, for inheritance tax purposes, um, this is where if you gift an asset to somebody and you remain alive after seven years of gifting that asset, that asset falls outside of your what's known as your estate for inheritance tax purposes. Okay, you obviously have to keep records and things like that to document that you have you had gifted this asset at a particular time. But... This helps massively because inheritance tax is levied at a rate of 40%, yeah, on, 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 on any gifts. Now, the notice that that seven year rule, though, um, is, is, is on a sliding scale. So I'm just going to read you what it says here. It's on a, what's known as a taper relief scale. So uh, if it's less than three years since you gifted the asset and then you passed away, I know it sounds really morbid, but like it's important. If it's less than three years, 40% tax is paid. Yeah, if it's between three and four years, 32% tax is paid. If it's between four and five years since you gifted it, 24% tax is paid. If it's between five and six years, 16% tax is paid. If it's between six and seven years since gifting, only 8% tax is paid. And then if it's seven years or more from when it's gifted, 0%, 0% tax is paid. Now, worth mentioning, the inheritance tax is obviously above the tax-free uh, amount, which is uh, 325,000 pounds, is also another 150,000 pounds uh, worth mentioning. But 325,000 uh, pounds is the, uh, if I've got that number correct, is the right, um, is the uh, the nil rate band, as it were, the, the amount that you don't get taxed on before you uh, in inheritance tax becomes uh, available or. Uh, becomes tax essentially on one's estate. Okay, uh, there's also like a, an annual three thousand uh, pounds exemption uh, for gifts. So uh, that's also something worth mentioning. But there's a lot to talk about here when it comes to inheritance tax, uh, and we've done a detailed guide on inheritance tax over on our website at thehumblepenny.com, uh, where we create blog posts weekly and stuff like that. So if you want to read more about inher inheritance tax specifically, I'll link to the guide below and above for you to head over and check that out. And then number seven is gifts to charity. And we all know this, you know, rich people do this all the time. They tell you, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing all this, uh, being, um, 
they're helping out and doing this and doing this but for a lot of these guys it's actually a tax gain but more generally for ordinary people obviously when you gift uh when you give money to, you know give uh give to charity um you know those guys can kind of claim some of that tax back that you're uh that you've given but it's actually a uh you pay no in income tax uh on the money that you've given to charity so it's actually a legit way uh of reducing uh your tax uh, if you are in that position, you know, <laughs> I know that people are thinking like, nah, man, I'm not giving, I I'm struggling. I get it. I get it. I get it. But I'm just, you know, my job is to tell you what the options are. So that's number seven. And then the final one is a bit of a, um, it's a bit of a wild card, right? The final way to reduce your taxes is actually to move abroad, right? Not being funny. But like, if I was actually, if I was in my twenties, and if I had to do, if I had to do life again, I'd, I'd seriously consider this. I've actually got friends who have taken a leap. They've gone to the Middle East. They've gone to like Dubai or Qatar or wherever to Portugal, and you know, they they've got it would appear more favourable tax situations going on over there. And you don't have to move permanently. In fact, I was on holiday once and I bumped into a, a couple who are a teach who are teach both teachers. And they, they're trying to get onto the property ladder, but things are things are hard, man, in the UK. So they're thinking very seriously about moving to teach, say, in the Middle East, raise some money over there, you know, build up their deposit and stuff like that, and then move back to the UK and buy their own property. Yeah. So the, the, the final kind of wildcard idea is to move abroad because look, you know, you know, we live in a very connected world now. And if you really want to, if you're really being smart, you know you can actually look to move abroad for a while, you know, make a bit of money over there, come back and reinvest in the UK if you wanted to do that. In fact, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Is moving abroad, given where we are, given when I say abroad, I'm moving to other countries, is moving to other countries as a way to, you know, to start a new life or build some wealth or to save money and stuff like that, something you are currently considering? Jump in the comments and let me know. And if, if I've not mentioned other ways in which you can reduce taxes legally, jump in the comments and let me know also. But other than that, if you really enjoyed today's video, I know it sounded like a bit of a marathon, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel. Growing our channel uh, helps us to reach more people and reaching more people means that we have more impact through the work that we do here on our channel. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. And as always, in all things, be thankful and seek joy. Take care, people. Stay positive. Bye for now.